Welcome to the channel, everyone. Uh, this is your host, Talking Sense. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, a favorite of mine. I'm sure a favorite of many of yours too. It's Sabanya Stillwater, which is a South African precious metals, diversified precious metals company. And I'm not going to focus too much on the fundamentals in this video, although I will talk about a couple of deals that were successful and weren't successful. But the main objective of today is to talk about the technicals and where I see the price going in the short term. Now, in front of you, I've thrown a bit of lines together, and this is just my way of plotting where I see price movements. It's not 100% accu accurate, but it gives you a broad sense of where the price could go. From about last year, March, Sabania has been in this downtrend, just trending downwards, which is sort of like a, a bullish consolidation because prior to that, in just after the pandemic, the stock rallied quite decently and has pulled back. It's given back some of those gains, which is normal because it's, it's run ahead of itself. And this pullback is, is actually quite a healthy thing. So it gives you an opportunity to accumulate if you are confident in the stock. And if you're an investor for the long term, it actually gives you an opportunity to purchase the dips and keep accumulating, which is what I like. I like it when the stock stays lower for longer because then it allows me more time. When I get my income, I can buy more shares. If it moves up too quickly, then those gains, I miss out on it. And I have a less of a, a holding of that specific stock. But let's put that aside. I want us to focus on this downwards, this downwards channel that it's been in for the last year, since last year, March. It peaked at about 76, 77 Rand, and it just started trading sideways. Had a, a little crash here. I wouldn't say a crash, but a, a, a big scare in the market, and then bounced straight back into that channel. So to me, this is telling me that buyers stepped in um, at this 45, 44 range. All right. It fell out this channel, and that was a deciding moment of if the stock was actually going to break down to the downside and fall further. But it looked like it held. Well, it did help, it did hold, and it subsequently recovered quite decently. And it hit the upper end of that channel and just started trading choppy downwards again. So it's been in that trend. And only recently, 2022, about Jan, January the 10th, around about middle of January, it broke out of that channel. You can see, yeah, clearly it broke out. And then it formed a little bull flag and broke out again. And now it's consolidating and chopping sideways again. Now, the price action of the stock is where does it go next? Now, before we talk about where I think it's going to go next, over the last few weeks, we've seen two stories come out. Uh, the Brazilian deal that they had uh, fell through. I think the, the value of that deal was about a billion dollars. And that fell through. So I actually like that because that's now extra money that they were planning to spend that they get to retain, which they can look for other acquisitions, improve their balance sheets, or possibly even increase dividends that will be announced soon when they release their earnings report, which will be on the 17th of February, if I'm not mistaken. So that's something to look out for. Uh, DRD Gold, um, they released their earnings and their updates last week, and it wasn't as high as people were expecting. They saw a, a, a decrease in their revenue, but that doesn't mean that the business is bad. That was just because of the price of gold, currency exchanges, 
and they were also coming off from a very low base at that time. So we shouldn't expect out the park numbers by Sabania. Maybe they do surprise us, but it might be to the lower end of what is predicted. So that might be a headwind going into February, March and where the price might go. The price might stall a little bit and it might scare some weak hands or some investors and actually send the price maybe back into that channel again, retesting that 44, 45 rand zone. And that is a very plausible situation. It's possible. If it breaks down to that, breaks down out of that trend that it's in now, falls back into that channel and could even make its way back down to about 38. Ultimately, I think 44 will hold, depending on how strong it is. It's held a couple of times. You can see if we go back to about 2020, it was also the previous high, March 20. And then if it falls and hits, we could see a bounce. That is one scenario back out of that trend line and then make its way up. Or it could fall back into that channel and struggle for a while. Now, I don't think that is likely unless there is an overall market scare, like a deleveraging event or some war that happens or anything that just rattles the market. So Banya could go on the back foot if they miss earnings, not as strong as what people thought, a bit of turbulence in the global economy, then this price action and this strength that they are showing today or in the subsequent weeks or days before this might just be reversed and all those gains get reversed and it falls back in that channel. So that is definitely a situation. So if you trade in it, you're going to want to send your stop losses. At the moment, I don't trade Sabanya. I accumulate in weakness because I believe this is a strong company. And this is what I think will happen. I might be a bit biased, but this is what I would like to happen based on what I'm seeing on the technical side. It looks like it is consolidating and ready to bounce to the next resistance zone. So why do I say that? I say that because it's consolidated from that heavy run up over 2020 into 2021. Consolidated, gave some of those gains back, which is just it's sort of digesting the move that it just went up on. And now it's finally broken out of that channel, that downwards channel. And we can see we had sort of a retest back onto that breakout zone of 54 rand. Broke out of it. We put in a, a, a sort of a bull flag structure here. Let me just show you that. We had this bull flag structure taking shape there. Not sure if you can see it. Let me make it a little bit bigger. All right. And... That was consolidating that breakout and retesting that breakout zone to see how strong it was, what, how many buyers were coming in. So we had that sort of bear flag and then it broke up again and it's, it's hitting its head around this 58, 59 zone. Yeah, that's, this is a very important area. It seems to be a, a, a strong resistance at the moment and it might work against us so you have to be cautious if you plan to buy right now because it might go another way especially with the earnings report coming up and the uncertainty in the global markets but ultimately i think long term we're still looking very good for their share and what i'm seeing here is this formation is is, is a bullish pennant that's starting to form so we might see this choppy sideways for a while up until earnings and then the earning earnings will sort of be the catalyst to decide which way the share is going to move if the market is not liking what they see then it's definitely going to break to the downside retest the support levels on its way down depending on how strong each one is make its way back to 44 and then slightly recovering again and starting that journey again or if the market likes what it sees, 
The dividends are nice. Maybe the dividends start attracting people because the dividend yield climbs. Maybe the money they were going to spend on acquisitions, they decide to reward shareholders. Depends what Neil and management decide to do. Ultimately, like I said, I'm a bit biased. What I would like for this consolidation to take place here in this bullish pennant, earnings acts as a catalyst for a breakout and we retest the next resistance zone at about 63, 64 Rand. If that is what transpires, if that's what happens, then we're looking at an uptrend. And if that is what happens subsequently, I'm going to be buying all the dips from that, from that time it breaks out. Uh, there's a few things, let's have a look. Let's say, we'll see here where it bottom out. We can say that's, that's the first low in, in this new uptrend, if this uptrend is confirmed. We could say that is the second low. And we, we'll see where, where we put in this next low going up. If this is the case, we might put in a, a bounce on the lower end of this pennant. So 55 could be a good area to load. But like I said, you have to watch the earnings because it could go through as long as you've got a stop loss if you are trading. And ultimately, we could be setting up for a recovery, something like this, looking into the future. Now, this isn't accurate because it hasn't put in those distinctive points yet for me to start drawing this channel. But I'm just sort of showing you what could take place. Let's see, let me cancel that. What could take place if there is a breakout to that 64 zone, 65 zone, then we are, we are making a new higher high. And we know the trend is reversing. We can already see we've got our low here. Okay, then we've put in a high. We've got another low. It's a little bit higher than the previous one. So it's a higher low. And then we've got this higher high. So we are due for a pullback. We don't know how severe it's going to be. I think we'll consolidate, maybe touch the end of this new channel if it creates this channel going up. And what we should see is a breakout up to 64, test that resistance zone. That to me will be confirmation. Then we might get a retest down back onto that breakout zone where we are now, which is at about 58, 59 and then continuously make our way up. Something like that, reclaiming the previous levels. So ideally, that's what I want to happen. But what we want to happen in the market isn't always the case. So just to quickly recap, there's a few things we need to pay attention to is the earnings, the, the, the results, that they, their presentation for, for the year prior to this, the six months prior to this. That will be a catalyst for the price to make its run up or its run down. Okay, but at the moment, to me, it's looking bullish. The, the botch deal in Brazil, that's bringing capital back in, so they're not spending as much. So that might give it a bit of um, some comfort if the results aren't as good as what people expected. They haven't paid out extra money and having not bad results, but not as good as what people initially thought. And then they've also concluded a new deal, the nickel facilities in France. Um, forgive me if I'm saying the name wrong, Sander Villa, I think it is the facility's name that was estimated to be about 65 million euros, which was about 1.5 billion rand, depending on the exchange rate. That has been overestimated now because the deal's gone through. Sabania has had to take on the, the debt that that company already has, plus the operational expenses to keep it going in the interim. So that was about an additional 20 million euros. So there was a little bit of an extra cost to what they anticipated, but that's, that's, that's the way things work. Investors would know that it's never perfect. It's, it's, you can't predict the exact amount that you're going to spend. So there's always that leeway of, I could overspend, I could also underspend. 
But luckily, like I said, the botch deal in Brazil, that money has come back in. So it's not like they need to find money anywhere. They are very cash generative still at the moment. So I'm still very positive on the company. And based on the technicals, I like what I see. All right, so lower lows are starting to form, higher highs. It broke out its previous channel. And we are waiting to see what happens in this bullish pennant formation. Ideally, a breakout to 64, pull back to 58 to give confirmation that this will be the entering zone. You won't buy on the breakout, not necessarily. You could, you could buy now, you could buy on the breakout, but ideally, I will be buying on the retest down back to 58. And if that holds on the next green candlestick after that, that's when I will start adding to my positions. And I think it will form this beautiful channel on its way up, eventually retesting the highs at about 76. All right, so there is some risk to it. The chart is very messy, but I hope that can make, I hope there's a bit of sense. You can make some sense out of that and we'll see how it goes. So that's just my thoughts, my clutter that I had in my mind. I wanted to share that with you where I see the price going. And let me know what you think. If you think the price is going down, what's the reason? If you think the price is going up, what's the reason? And also let me know what your price target is for 2022. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me again in my video. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit a like, please share this with a friend, and thank you again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.